Who? Okay. Golden Bachelor and Bachelor in Paradise recap. This is so monumental. If you don't know, welcome to my casual channel. I talk about anything casual or monumental in relation to life and life's events. And this week, we are talking about The Golden Bachelor as well as Bachelor in Paradise. I talk a lot of reality TV, mainly Bachelor because Bachelor is like the most consistent, but I've been talking a lot of Love is Blind. So I feel just really happy about getting back into Bachelor related content because it's just like, it's such a fun show. And I love that we have a new show, like a new series in relation to the Bachelor franchise because you know, like in order to be successful, you got to try new things. And I just feel like this is a very successful concept. Um, and people really just viewed The Bachelor, the typical younger one is just like, these are just a bunch of idiots going on TV to like seek out fame and like become little influencers. You know what I mean? But this feels very real. I, I'm such a, I'm such a fan already. We love Gary. We're rooting for Gary. Just needed to say that beforehand. I'm pairing this with Bachelor in Paradise because they just went one after another and they're going to be on the same night so I don't really want to record two separate things because I'm pushing out a lot of videos um not only like love is blind re related but my own personal content and I really don't want it to like span way too much like I don't want to record too many videos I'd rather just condense this into one so that's why I'm recording golden batch and bachelor in paradise if you're one or the other maybe I'll try to find a time time stamp and like split it up if what whatever i don't know what i'm gonna do but just know that you're just gonna get this okay so if you're not aware from my channel of my channel um probably not probably not but i i specifically talk about the standout moments as opposed to summarizing the whole entire thing um so if you're like i'm confused on this person or this event or this thing because it's not in order it's just because we all watch the same exact show i watched the show i took notes about what stood out to me um, and that's really just what I wanted to talk about is what interested me. So that's what we're gonna get. So let's start off with the Golden Bachelor notes. Oh my god, okay. This, even the intro, and I said I wasn't going to summarize, but what stood out to me was the intro itself. The beginning of seeing um, Gary's story, seeing him getting ready with his hearing aid, his hearing aid. That like really... They knew what they were doing when they were trying to like strum at the heart. You know what I mean? Also, I have an eyelash in my eye. I'm so sorry. Um, they they really knew what they were trying to do with that. With them showing him delicately putting in his ear. <laughs> like, I was that necessary? Or like, does it just like give us more like, I don't know. Does it make us have like more of a connection with him? I don't know. But I really liked that they're handling this with such respect. You know how everybody says respect your elders? I, as a past caregiver, and I'm not saying these people need caregivers at all, okay, they're doing fine, they're in their mid, they're, they're mid 60s to later 70s, they're fine, uh, not later, mid 60s, mid 70s, okay, they're fine, but like, as somebody who's dealt with people who are older and like been in homes or people that are older, I feel like there is a lot of delicacy needed and a lot of respect needed for these stories, because this is just like, this is their entire life that you're seeing. And I almost, I just feel so bad for the rose ceremony people because you know that like, obviously this isn't their last shot at love. It's not the last thing they could do to find love, but it's it's such a special, like it's such a special opportunity and Gary needs to handle these women with such care because they've lived their whole life. Not their whole lives, but they live such lives that they just like hold it so delicately. So I'm pr like protective over these people because I just, I truly do stand by respect your elders. I know that's controversial because it could be kind of like, well, these elders don't respect me. So one of my friends was like, did you see they're doing an old people bachelor? I don't pe want people to talk about them like that. I love them. Anyway, um, okay, so the first person to step out absolutely had to be Edith in the golden dress. And I just want to say, Edith, you know what you're doing. Edith knows what she's doing and she looks good doing it and I am like impressed like oh my god she has forever put an imprint in our brains as like that's the that's the hottest one like that's the most bold one that we're gonna see oh my god 
Sandra, gonna move on to Sandra. Um, if you're unfamiliar of her, she was, I also, okay, I was gonna say she's a black lady with um, like a shorter kind of bob cut and like uh, was wearing, I think a red dress. I don't know if it's, I personally don't ever want to be described as like, oh, that black girl over there, like, but also it's like, a, it's an easy descriptor, <laughs> but like, I don't know, you, you never want to be reduced to, oh, she's a black person on the show, you know what I mean? Like, I feel bad saying that, but it's like, you never want to be reduced to simply, oh, that's a black girl, blah, 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 versus like other people will be like, oh, she had the golden dress, she had like long gray hair, she blah, 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 she stood out for this, it's supposed to like, that's just the black one, you know what I mean? <laughs> Not saying she's the only black one on the show, there's also Natasha, but like, it's hard for me to describe people like that. Anyway, whatever, that does not matter. Um, So uh, Sandra is a killer and I love it because she was like, and then whatever expletive came out her mouth, I want to know and I want to do that exercise with her specifically. It doesn't have, I'm not, it, I'm not having it with my husband because like with a, with a man it's just different. <laughs> like I want to hear like a delicate woman to be like, <sighs> I just, I, it's great um i i wrote down that i wonder if this show will produce any senior citizen influencers because and that's just a very interesting idea is it not i want to follow sandra on instagram i want to keep up with her youtube channel sandra is about it to me like um i just wonder if any of these people are going to come out as like personalities because they're very entertaining and that's another thing i will say about this Older people are a lot more quick-witted, I feel like, than younger people. Um, I personally identify with like Gen Z humor, like older humor does not appeal to me because it's just different different generations um, and their humor seems a lot, uh, the structure of it is a lot slower. It's like um, punchline, it's like um, set up punchline, whatever, set up joke punchline, whatever, but like ours is very like quick and like stupid. <laughs> But these old people, I, I feel like they're very like whippy, very snappy, and they're very risque. As opposed to the younger people are kind of like, oh, somebody made like a kind of explicit sex joke and they brought their dildo. But these people are like um, more risque in like a funny, respectful way, which I feel like most older people get. Versus young pe younger people, you're either like, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. But I, I I love a lot of their personalities. Okay, so then we have, well, not then. I'm not going through every single person who stepped out the limo. But uh, somebody stood out to me, and probably everybody was Leslie, the person who stood off, who started off being like, eh. and then she took off her wig and her little granny dress, and she was like, yeah, it's me. I'm a senior citizen, but I'd be slaying on the side. <laughs> like I loved it. Um, she was somebody who inspired uh what's it called private dancer by prince and she dated prince back in the you don't just bring that up and just move past it you don't what <laughs> she dated prince back in the day are you kidding me wild um i just want to know more about that you know what i mean like that's why i'm also curious are any of these senior citizens going to become influencers because i want to hear about their lives how the heck did you just date prince like how was every how was anybody else after that going to compare did you date other people too what's your life like do you, is is that your song now that you like listen to private dancer by him what um okay these women they look good they look good oh my god i know that some of them are like very filled up very botoxed up but i feel like they carry it pretty well like some of these women are be, be looking god ah. um i just think it's so respectful of these women the way that they're handling their the way that they're coming off there's like no draw yeah there's no drama in the way that there is for the younger folk because like these are <sighs> not me being like these are actual people's lives <laughs> these are like these are people who have lived <laughs> so i just feel like we're handling it like i keep saying delicately also let me not infantilize these people as well like these are just 70 year olds 60 70 year olds like my parents are up getting up there like they don't need to be penalized. um I, I asked my husband this I turned to him I was like do fight how much how much emphasis do finances play when you're older when you're dating you know what I mean like I feel like it's a thing when you're getting established in your life like oh I'd like a man for to pay for us dating oh I can handle this and he can handle that oh I can blah 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 once you 
have gotten to a certain point now, I just can't, I can't imagine that finances really play that big of a role when you're trying to find your person. Because I think I was looking at, I forget who, but there was somebody, I think was maybe Faith, maybe it was Faith, who seemed like she came from, not came from money, but she had like a nice like farm place and it was like a big house. And I was like, I feel like that's, she has a little bit more money than Gary. And then I was thinking, how how heavily are finances played when in when you're like in your 70s you know do you care do you do you put a lot more emphasis because it's like this is my life now like I'm on a fixed income gear where <laughs> I'm not gonna spend this I'm not gonna spend money on you because this is my like life savings um you know that's just I'm just got my like my little um my gears turning or whatever I really do like that Gary was talking to these women like very respectfully uh it made me think about how like a golden bachelorette would handle a bunch of old men <laughs> just being just fighting for her I don't even know if I want to see a golden bachelorette because I don't know if I want to see senior citizen men all vying for because like when it comes to bachelor versus bachelorette the women always, even though sometimes they can be catty and petty and like dramatic, the men, the testosterone that runs through the bachelor mansion is like at some moments like kind of gross to see, like kind of like, eh, like <laughs> just over the top too much. But when it comes to senior citizens, are they going to be respectful to this? I don't think so. I don't think so. I <laughs> Old men, the golden bachelorette, I don't know. No shade to the bachelorette. No shade to the golden bachelorette, the future golden bachelorette. But I, like, anyway. Um, Teresa was wild for the whole, like, let me show you my birthday. Because she did it so dramatically. She was like, Aah! like, we were really going to see something. We know that we weren't. But it's just the way that it was, like, tease I could not be comfortable it was just her in like a nude bodysuit but it was it was shocking I will give her that like it was something to remember I will give her that but <laughs> well, she seems like such a sweetheart and it was her birthday that's cool um when Susan said uh yeah you see these heels you know I can handle a good six inches <laughs> um that to me was that was wild because that is where I'm saying these older people are risque in a very interesting way because when it comes to younger people, she's like, ew, you're weird, bro. Like, why would you say that? You're just the H word. <laughs> you're just the H word. I don't like to say things on YouTube that make me feel like bad. But like, <laughs> when it comes to older people, you're like, oh my God, you still got it in you? That's crazy. Um, Anyway. So everyone is happy for April when she pulls Gary uh, first, which is crazy because people are never excited. People are always like, okay, so Hannah pulled Peter, which is crazy because it's the two actual names of contestants. Hannah pulled Peter and he wasn't even finished. Like she just like pulled him, which is like, and that's when the drama typically starts. It's like everything gets intense, but everyone was so respectful. They were like, oh my God you know and maybe there were some little sly little comments said by some of the girlies but we didn't really take it too seriously you know um I mean I guess it's somebody did say like I, I thought she hadn't seen the show which is interesting because that is such a show thing to do it was like can I take can I grab you <laughs> that is giving sus if she said she didn't see the show when you're just out here doing bachelor moves <laughs> um okay so Ellen to me if you if you know you know Ellen to me looks like a kind, optimistic version of Angela Martin. And I stand by that. I do. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. Uh, Teresa's birthday thing was so incredibly cute. Oh my God. Um, but the fact that I had a problem with this. I had a problem with the fact that Gary was like, do you, so if I take a bite of this, will you like clean me up? Because it was like, a, that's her birthday cake, bro. Like, <laughs> I understand you're just trying to get like a kiss or whatever. And maybe that's like a birthday gift for her but it's like don't be selfish you got that for her to eat and you're just out here gonna be eating it so you can like sneak a kiss i get it it's kind of clever but it's like okay gary bear like <laughs> gary um anyway also, 
not Jimmy Kimmel's Nepo auntie. That's a Nepo auntie coming on the show. I have a feeling they just did it so that Jimmy Kimmel could come back in the show and talk about The Bachelor and, and then be like, and we got a contestant here. Come on, auntie. You know, I hate that. I Does anybody still watch Jimmy Kimmel? Be for real. Like, and does anybody under the age of 52 <laughs> actually watch Jimmy Kimmel? Because I feel like our generation is kind of the generation that goes by clips and things. We don't sit down and watch late night talk shows, you know, unless like, uh, who's like an icon of our time? I don't, unless like Jojo C. <laughs> I don't even keep up with Jojo C. Oh, okay. I just wanted to think of like a, a Gen Z icon who could potentially host a late night show and we would like tune in to watch. Um... Unless, like, Justin Bieber was gonna start his own talk show. What, who's watching? Anyway, um, I need to get back, I need to get back to this because I'm also gonna be recording Bachelor in Paradise. So, from the, <laughs> from the minute that Faith stepped out, I felt an immediate connection between them. And it might have also been, like, the angle, the music that they were playing with Faith. But immediately, I feel like they're trying to get us to, like, well, maybe they're not even trying. I feel like she's a very likable person and I feel like she either is giving winner energy. No, I just feel it's winner energy. I don't, I, I was gonna say, or bachelorette energy. No, it's gonna be winner energy. Are you kidding me? Um, in my opinion, I feel like they might give Sandra the batch, the first golden bachelorette because, and somebody was saying this and I don't even mind them saying this, but it could have come off offensive depending on who said it, who the, who's the first person who was gonna say it, but like, if you're going to do a, a a golden bachelorette, they have to be a, they have to be a minority. They do because like um I just have a feeling it'll cause ruffles in like bachelor nation if it's not. So I'm pretty sure they're going to do they're going to do that. I I don't know. Do let me know if if you agree or not. Like some people just saying that and I agreed and I could see it. Not saying it's like bible, not saying it's like what's going to happen, but I just could I could see it. Um I need to yeah, whatever. So Natasha is interesting. I would love to know what an aging coach does. I'm not making fun of it. A lot of people are like, yeah, an aging coach, that's real. You know, I genuinely feel like we maybe even need an aging coach in our society because we're so deathly afraid of getting old. There's so many, like, even one of the contestants was like, I hate getting old. I don't want to get old. I'm not even old. Like, you know, we need to embrace our old ages. We need to embrace things like that are scary like we've been taught our whole entire lives like uh you only live once like <laughs> I don't know like you need to age gracefully but it's like I would love somebody to teach me how to reverse that I would I'm a sucker for that um so let me just go into the rose ceremony because I have so much more to get through oh my god uh the rose ceremony is pretty tame and the only shocking thing that happens spoiler also like I don't know why I would say spoiler we're like I don't know how many minutes in, but we're a couple, we're a decent amount into this video. The most shocking thing is that Miss Patty, Patty, Miss, Miss James's mom, Miss Matt, Miss, Miss, Mr. Matches James's mom goes home. And I was thinking like, yeah, Gary knows a cloud chaser when he sees one. <laughs> Gary knows a cloud chaser when he sees one. Because <laughs> like, I was thinking that too, I was like, maybe Gary just, like doesn't want her because the first thing that she said out the limo was like yeah my husband my husband my son was the bachelor I don't know if you know him and he was probably thinking like I don't know I don't know anything about this lady like I just got chosen because I'm likable I guess um <laughs> I just want to know his re reasoning but whatever it's not really that shocking that people that went home except for Patty um because we don't know these people there was no drama, you know, whatever. Gary cries during the ceremony and it really touched my heart because it just, it really shows you that he has a lot of empathy for these people in their lives. And I really appreciate that. Um, Bachelor in Paradise. Okay, we are transitioning to Bachelor in Paradise. Thank you to whoever watched. <laughs> if you're gonna be leaving now, as if somebody's gonna be leaving, um, like they didn't leave within the first five minutes because that's <laughs> um bachelor in paradise interesting it's so interesting somebody commented on like a bachelor fan take um video being like 
the dichotomy of bachelor in paradise versus golden bachelor is incredible and it is it's incredible um because it's just like a bunch of young influencer 20 some 20 to 30 somethings who are just like bopping around like truly just gaining an audience like wanting to be likable like maybe coming out with a relationship that'll maybe last two to three years but when we see the dichotomy of like we first see the dichotomy of um this is the bachelor for somebody who is a widower and somebody who like we really feel for and women who we really like respect you know versus like this is influencer boot camp that's what this is <laughs> anyway so bachelor in paradise we have some heavy hitters we do in my opinion these are my heavy hitters in my mind Rachel Reckia, duh, like they got a bachelorette to be on here. Um, Brayden, if they didn't have Brayden, they were fumbling the bag, and I stand by that. <laughs> I know that he's a lot of people don't like him, but you like we would be so missing out if he wasn't on this. We'd be so missing out. Uh, and then Blake Boys. <laughs> I'm. I feel like it's almost even disrespectful. I called him a heavy hitter because like. <laughs> man is kind of funny to me he's kind of funny um and then honestly i think that avon kind of is a heavy hitter because like we all liked avon i think he's kind of cute i do like <laughs> i could see him i could see him being like too cool for continuing on the bachelor but i appreciate that he's back on i do um i'm unexpectedly excited for these people after i've seen them because i feel like their behavior wasn't that exciting on the show originally versus now is Olivia I don't remember Olivia at all but now I'm so excited to see her because she's in this little love triangle she's, she's in this little love triangle and I'm <laughs> kicked for it um Will was not like he was like nothing like he was just like the tears of the show like he I'm surprised that women are even vying after him I, I, like after what happened um it's wild um, I'm not unex unexpectedly excited for Jess because I think that Jess really held her own in her season, but I don't feel like also I could qualify her as a heavy hitter because I don't feel like she was a heavy hitter. Like, I could see her being wanting to be on the beach. Honestly, in my opinion, heavy hitters are like people who you want to see on the beach, but you're kind of like, I don't know if they'll go, you know, I could see Jess wanting to go on the beach, but yeah, unexpectedly excited for Olivia, Will, and Jess. <laughs> so we see Rachel arriving in the first... <laughs> the first couple minutes and jesse's like you're the first one here and she's like oh my god <laughs> that's great <laughs> like so then <laughs> we get the next couple people we have mr aaron mm, yeah i was gonna say you know how i feel about you don't i don't think if people know how um aaron to me just is really interesting because just because i i don't really like him i don't really like his vibe he just, to me, also gives authoritative Uche vibes. Oh, so sorry that I said it. But if you know Love is Blind, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and then we have Mr. Prince Charming himself. <laughs> Shrek Prince Charming, not Prince Charming Prince Charming. Um, just hating in the corner, in the in their little gossip corner. Um, obviously, I know his name is Sean. Obviously, I know. But he also, he also refers to himself as, like, Ken. I, I, I'm Ken. Like, I, I, I know I look so much like Ken. You, like, in a weird way could resemble a doll, but I don't think it would be Ken that you derive from. I don't. <laughs> um, but no, the accurate representation is Shrek, the Prince Charming from Shrek. We'll just call him Shrek Charming, because I really don't feel comfortable calling him Prince Charming, because it just feels a little bit too, I don't know. So, okay, yeah, we'll call him Shrek Charming. Um, Brooklyn comes in uh, and is giving off knockoff Demi energy. Like, Brooklyn, to me is a likable hater she's a hater because a lot of what comes out her mouth is judgment of other people that are like rightful to feel that you understand where it comes from but you're also kind of like don't let those people zap your energy dude just like be your best self without commenting on them you know okay so cat <laughs> cat is the one that brooklyn has beef with um she just gives that girl that like not a lot of people like but somehow she is friends that like ride for her like what the hell um like she gives that girl that nobody likes because she complains a bunch and we saw that in already uh, anyway um lol for a lot of people pining after will lol what i at first 
I totally thought because when Will and Kylie met, also Kylie is the hot commodity, which is like so, is it shocking? I don't know. People love a soft, delicate girly. People love a soft, delicate, racially ambiguous mixed girly too. <laughs> so maybe it's the perfect storm. Like she pro she definitely is the, um, what is her name? Sierra. Because it's Sierra and Joe, right? Of this season. <laughs> No, she's mixed she just looks she'd be she'd be giving it um but yeah so love that olivia or olivia love that kylie's a hot commodity and um will isn't really like a hot commodity but he's in a little love triangle which is interesting so um it's interesting that no it's not interesting that shrek charming is thirsty for everybody but like it is because it's like he, nobody I don't feel like a lot of people are gonna be thirsty for you you know like why would pe people be thirsty for you you're kind of weird it's weird because he's like attractive in a very unnatural way <laughs> that's so mean so Will and Olivia have a conversation and they're getting all like close up together and I said to my husband I was like they know each other outside of the show like they've talked before you don't get that comfortable you're that comfortable people you don't know or maybe you do. I don't know. I would not be that comfortable with somebody I knew. Uh, I didn't know. Um, so it just was crazy. Like the chemistry was crazy. And also the whole, we get into the whole toe sucking thing. I just could not imagine myself wanting to put anybody's toes in. Or me wanting to put somebody, my toes in somebody's mouth. I could not, I can't. Um, but they have this little conversation that's like, oh, you guys are going to be linked. Y'all are going to be linked. And uh, um, then that's threatened because Kylie gets the first. Also, it's so interesting. Somebody brought this up that like uh, Kylie was not interested in Will until somebody was going to take away Will. Until Olivia, he until she heard that Olivia kissed Will. Will kissed Olivia. Sorry, Olivia did not kiss Will. Will grabbed Olivia's face and kissed her. Because that, that's why it was so shocking that like, she didn't or he didn't owe her he didn't feel like he owed her a conversation because it was like you were giving the passion you were giving the passion <laughs> like what well not the whole entire passion but um anyway so uh, kylie and will go on a date which heats olivia up it heats her up because she's like um you kissed me like <laughs> you we talked about sucking toes we got deep <laughs> This is crazy that we went from Bachelor, Golden Bachelor to this. It's crazy. Um, so when Kylie and Will go on the date, it's like they lock in, which is weird. But there always has to be that one, those one people that are like overly excited about each other for no reason. Um, also, I didn't think that Kylie liked Will because in the beginning when they were talking and I told my husband this, I, I don't have to tell you when I tell my husband things, but I feel like it just makes it more real for you to be like, oh, she really be watching this and really be saying things out loud that she doesn't write down. I was like, she does not like him because what she said after he said like oh you're super beautiful i really like you like I, I, I like he was getting nervous around her what she said was oh i'm so honored i would not say oh i'm so honored around somebody i'm into if my husband and i when my husband and i first started dating and he was like giving me compliments and stuff i was giddy i was like no way you are saying this to me because like i feel that way about you so much and i could not just right out the gate say that I couldn't just be like, oh my god, I'm so honored. <laughs> I'm honored. <laughs> what? I'm planning my wedding in our head. Are you kidding me? That's crazy. So, uh, <laughs> when they go on the date, Will falls into the pool and he's hella embarrassed about it. <laughs> I don't think I would be that embarrassed. I'd be like, oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Sorry. <laughs> Um, and I feel like it was almost like I we got secondhand embarrassment because Kylie was trying to like talk him out of it and be like, you're fine, you're good, you're good. It's okay, you were like trying to help me. You were being a gentleman. <laughs> it's like, you don't have to defend this man, Kylie. Like, no, it was embarrassing. Like, let's be real. Like, he's acting like it's embarrassing, so it's embarrassing. If he was acting like it was funny, it'd be funny. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> so, after the, well, during the date, they're like, and I really like you you're it for me you're all I want which is like what they stop what 
because you got threatened that your little man was going to be dead. <laughs> so then we see Will and Olivia um, have beef after they get back because it's the next day. And Olivia's like, um, I just feel disrespected. And honestly, this is like a, let me, if anybody's watching, let me know how the heck you feel about this. <coughs> because my husband is like, well, this is like day one. Like, they don't really owe each other anything. Like, she shouldn't be this upset. I more so am on the side of, like, I feel emotion for her. Like, he grabbed her face and kissed her. Like, gave her the passion. So, and it's just, like, Bachelor in Paradise etiquette to be like, listen, I like you. If, or if you say, like, I like you or if you show any signs of liking somebody, to be like, I'm gonna go on this date. Like, no matter what, no matter who you are, if it's the first day, if it's the first 30 minutes, it just is customary. I know it's stupid, these little made-up rules, but honestly, I would feel more respected if somebody pulled me aside after they kissed me and were like, I'm gonna go on this date, but I'll see you when I get back, though. Maybe? We'll see how it goes. It's just, we're all chilling, we're all living, <laughs> like, type of a thing. I would have appreciated if somebody, like, con like told me, because I just, like, you have to know how sensitive people are. I mean, like, it's the first day, how would he know how sensitive she is, but just to be, like, a, a respectful person. I guess he did pull her aside the second day but no I get her feelings because I'm also a very incredibly sensitive person I get I get why she was pissed but then also she's like Avon's literally coming down and he and Kylie's gonna leave for him <laughs> which is all facts because then Avon comes down and shakes it up and I'm geeked I'm geeked for this um yeah that's pretty much all I have to say. I hope this video isn't like 40 minutes long, but uh, let me know your thoughts. If you agreed or disagreed with anything like Bachelor in Paradise or Golden Bachelor, let me know wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever you're doing, whatever time of day it is. I hope you have a good morning, afternoon or night.